Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of the Big Blue News Podcast. I'm your host, Chris B. Smore, and before we begin the podcast, I want to wish everyone a happy new year. I hope everybody enjoyed their New Year's Eve, and they are enjoying your New Year's Day as well. But let's get into the podcast. We're going to be talking about the UK versus Iowa Bowl game, the Music City Bowl, and then also recapping the UK versus versus Louisville basketball game. Well, let's get into it. I was at the UK versus Iowa uh, football game, and it was not a great game. I was there covering it for my station that I work with, and Destin Wade, I mean, he did all right. He's only a true freshman. We didn't have an offensive coordinator at the game because UK, obviously, they fired Richard Scandrello. Um Vince Merrill was the, basically, offensive coordinator calling plays for UK. But Destin Wade, he he went 16 for 30, had 98 yards and two interceptions. And both interceptions, they were pick sixes, which led to uh, Iowa having a 21 to nothing lead because Iowa, they got the ball with great field position after a punt return, I believe. Um, and then basically they scored two or three plays from that. And then basically right after they scored um, their first touchdown and their only offensive touchdown, uh, Destin Wade, UK, comes back in on offense, and then he throws a pick six immediately. Um, and then towards the end of the first half, UK, again, Destin Wade throws another pick six, which was all, you know, UK, which was all the scoring that Iowa had um, for the whole game, 21 to nothing. UK could never get anything going offensively for sure. Like I said, they only had 98 yards um, passing. And the total uh, total yards they got for the game was 185 total yards, 117 passing yards, and 68 rushing yards. Um, compared to Iowa, they barely got over 200 yards. Um, they got 206 total yards. Um, they also got 10 first downs. UK also had 10 first downs. And UK also had 10 punts. So that's usually a recipe for disaster. Um, every, even with UK's great defense, it wasn't enough. Um, UK held the Hawkeyes. They went 0 for 13 combined on third and fourth down conversions, 0 for 11 on third down, and 0 for 2 on fourth down. Meanwhile, with UK, they didn't do <laughs> too much better. They went 2 for 18 on third down conversions and then 3 for 5 on fourth down conversions. And UK, I wish they could have played a lot better, but you know, with everything that happened this season, with firing Richard Scandrello, um, not having your starting QB play, Will Levis, not having your starting running back play with Chris Rodriguez, it's usually a recipe for disaster. Um, also, counting Tim Valentine didn't play on the defensive side um, because he declared for the NFL draft. And then afterwards, Pete Ron Smith and Jock Jones also declared for the NFL draft. So the defensive side could be hurting next year, but... One thing I do believe in is Brad White. Brad White is a defensive-minded, you know, he's the defensive coordinator for UK, and he does very well on the defensive side. But for UK to win football games in the future, they must have an offense with, you know, scoring because they can't continue to score, you know, 17 to 23 points a game to win. In the SEC, you need both, of course, offense and defense, but... To win the SEC, you need to score a lot of points. You need to be putting up in the low 30s, usually mid-30s to win games. And hopefully UK uh, can be better next year with supposedly bringing in Liam Cohen. Everybody knows Liam Cohen is coming back for UK. So hopefully with Liam Cohen coming back and with bringing in also Devin Leary, the NC State transfer, and then Raymond Davis, uh, the Vanderbilt transfer for running back, UK will be fine on the offensive side, also adding, you know, offensive tackles. They added Marquise Cox on the offensive side. So UK is going to look great, I think, on the uh, offensive side for sure. Um, who else did they bring in? Um, they also brought in JQ Hardaway, a cornerback. Um, they also brought in that um, Alabama transfer to be on the offensive side with Tanner Bowles. So I think... UK could be loaded next year on the offensive side. Like I said, just a little nervous on the defensive side, but I trust in Brad White. Also, Mark Stoops is a defensive 
coach, you know, even though he's a head coach for the UK, he's very defensive minded. So I think everything will be fine on the defense for next year. I would love to see, you know, our defense force, you know, more turnovers, more turnovers that they can, whether that be uh, fumbles, you know, interceptions, something needs to happen on the defensive side, in my opinion, for continue for Kentucky to continue to, to take the next step on the defensive side. On the offensive side, you're bringing back Liam Cohen. He really helped UK's offense get it going um, last year, and hopefully he can continue that momentum. Um, he recruited, you know, Destin Wade um, to come to Kentucky because Destin, he could have either played safety or QB, and and then uh, Liam Cohen promised, you know, Destin Wade that he would play QB, and that's what he did. He finally got his first start yesterday. And like I said, he didn't play the greatest, but I don't have any, like, bad words to say about Destin or Keaton Wade. Um, I've interviewed them. I really enjoyed talking to them. Uh, they are great people, and I wish them uh, the best of success going forward. And I know Destin and Keaton Wade will definitely uh, continue to be great at UK. Hopefully they don't transfer. I doubt they will, but I wish them the best. And I think next year what bring in, like I said, Liam Cohen is going to just it's going to be fine. Um and UK just needs to improve. You can't have, you know, less than two hundred passing or two hundred total yards during the game. You need, you know, close to three hundred um yards, at least total yards during the game, three or four hundred total yards during the game. Usually that equates to a win and hopefully UK can continue to be better in football next year. Um, being at the game, it was terrible, just going from sideline to sideline to end zone to end zone, just, you know, trying to film the game on both sides of the field, and it was just boring. I was keeping up uh, during the game about the UK versus Louisville game, and luckily I was able to, you know, not watch the game during uh, the Music City Bowl, but I uh, watched the game today, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but Going forward with UK football, they need a better recruiting class. I'm tired of getting, I'm tired of three star recruits. Hopefully, UK football can finally start getting four and five star recruits. Hopefully, they can also start getting good QBs from high school and then uh, make them, you know, become a great QB. Because with UK football, how many players have we seen that we've got from high school become, you know, great players? I mean, uh, Obviously, we always get transfer players. We got Steven Johnson to come in. Uh, we got Will Levis to come in, and now Devin Leary. But sometimes the transfer portal, it might not always be open for QBs. And UK, they need to start, you know, getting high school uh, recruits, QBs, grooming them to become great QBs, you know, in college. And then once they finally get a start, then we'll be all good because whenever you have a backup, you need to still be competing because with most players or with most teams, your backup quarterback will still uh, will still leave competition for you, you know, for you to be able to be competing in games. So hopefully UK can continue to do that. Um, like I said, they added two new coaches this year, so hopefully that improves w with recruiting going forward. But now, let's talk a little bit about this UK-Louisville game. Like I said, the game happened yesterday. UK blew out Louisville like they were supposed to. They won 86-63, to and that was great. And whenever I got to watch the replay of the game, um, a couple of things I noticed. Xavier Wheeler was, again, out of control with the ball. Um, let me see. He had four turnovers, and... I was disappointed in Xavier Wheeler's play. Obviously, he had seven points and nine assists, but he just has to be more in control with the ball because you can't have four turnovers by your starting point guard and hopefully you'll win. UK had 12 turnovers overall, but what stuck out to me as well was Jacob Toppin. He had an insane game. I hope he can continue to improve from what he did yesterday. He had 24 points. Uh, and then also seven rebounds and two assists. He had a very great game, and if Jacob Toppin can continue to do that going forward, going forward, UK will be great, uh, for sure. And 
like I said, UK is right now 9-4 and four on the season, 8-0, and oh, and I think UK really needed to blow out an opponent, especially like Louisville, because that's their rivals, and that's what they did. Um, Oscar Sheeway had another great game, 24 points and 14 rebounds, and most of the players on UK, uh, they weren't double figures for the starters. I mean, Jacob, like I said, 24, Oscar with 24, Casey Wallace with 17, Sabir didn't get uh, double digit points. He had seven points. Chris Livingston had five, but Chris Livingston also played pretty well uh, for the minutes he got. Chris Livingston was the starter. He played 20 minutes for the game. Um, and then off the bench, um, the only player that really got a lot of minutes coming off the bench was Antonio Reeves. He had 17 minutes, and that came mainly in the second half. He didn't play too much in the first half from what I was watching again. Uh, I just wish Antonio Reeves could start, you know, shooting more threes, in my opinion. He was attacking the rim, having floaters and everything. He went 1-4-4 four, four on the field, 0-2 from the three-point line. Um, obviously made three uh, out four free throws. So he did all right, uh, only had five points. I mean, not a lot of players uh, played yesterday off the bench. Four player or five players played off the bench. Um, and out of the five players, like I said, Reeves played 17. The other four players played a combined 15 minutes. So the other four players played less than, uh, Antonio Reeves. Um, another thing that stuck out to me was, again, free throw shooting. It was not the greatest. They went 16 for 25 from free throw line, 64% UK. They have to improve on making their free throws. If they want to make a big title run, the two main things they need to improve on is free throw shooting and then also shooting threes and then, of course, limiting turnovers. But going into 2023, I hope UK can find a seven to eight man rotation. And then also, like I said, just make free throws because if you're, uh, if you have a seven to eight man rotation, that means you finally figured out who's actually starting and who's going to be coming off the bench for UK. Um, another thing while watching the game, UK did great attacking Louisville's zone. Um, whenever attacking the zone, they got the ball in the middle and then it led to open threes, um, led to, you know, players, uh, being able to be in the post and posting up, making shots Oscar Sheeway for sure. Um, the one thing, like I said, with Samir Wheeler, his four turnovers came from mainly just trying to get the ball into the post and not getting it properly inside because that led to turnovers which isn't good um if you're the starting point guard because you need to get into your big man to be able to score points and that's what caused most of Sabir's uh turnovers just from trying to get into the post and nothing was happening obviously Oscar Sheway got called for a three second violation during the game so hopefully uh hopefully that doesn't happen in the future he only got called once for it, so hopefully, you know, refs don't catch on to that um, going into the future, and hopefully everything will be okay. Um, also, another thing that I noticed was UK went on a, went on another scoring drought. It was at the very beginning of the second half. Uh, they went three minutes without scoring a point. Uh, UK, they were up, I think, 30 to 45 going into halftime. Uh, yes, they were up 30 to 45, and then uh, I think Louisville got the game down to six or nine points going into the second half. They went on a nice run. UK went three minutes without scoring. And if UK, if they want to win games, they have to stop having scoring drafts because that has happened in so many games. That happened in the UCLA game um, whenever it was really close. I think they were down by two or four points. You know, UK went on a big scoring drought. And I was saying to myself, Coach Cal needs to call a timeout. Coach Cal needs to call a timeout. And then he never did. And that's what led to UK probably losing to UCLA because nobody could score. UK couldn't score during that game. But like I said, UK did very well. Um, I was happy with the win against Louisville. Like I said, they won by 23 points. And I've, a lot of fans were saying they should have won by 30 points, you know. But, hey, it's a win. They won by 23 against their rivals, and hopefully going forward in 
SEC play. Uh, they can continue to win games. Obviously, Louisville is an, an SEC opponent, but going to SEC play, obviously, UK is 0-1. They lost to Missouri. They got blown out by Missouri. So, going forward into SEC play, hopefully, UK can find a rhythm. Uh, like I said, I was happy about the win. There were things that I know it's during the game that UK still, they need to work on. Like I said, Xavier Wheeler, he needs to limit his turnovers. And then also making sure we don't go on scoring drafts like we did yesterday. But overall, UK, they won. Happy about the win. I'm sad that UK football lost to Iowa. Um, that ended their uh, long, it was like the longest like non-conference win streak in uh, FBS um, that UK had. So that's finally over. I know last year UK ended Iowa's. This year Iowa ended UK's. Longest uh, win streak, so that sucks for UK football. Hopefully, UK football can have a better, uh, better record next year than seven and six. Because, like I said, UK with football, um, with UK football, they had a four-year long uh, win streak in bowl games starting from 2018 to 2021. Um, UK got into their first ever bowl game under Mark Stoops in 2016. They lost their first two 2016. Um, they lost to Georgia Tech. I forgot which bowl it was, but 2017, it was Northwestern. That was the Music City Bowl. UK lost. Um, Benny Snow Jr. got ejected, and UK had a chance to win. Um, they went for that two-point conversion, and then now they finally lose again in the Music City Bowl, this time to Iowa in 2022, but UK... They've lost three straight Music City Bowl uh, games now uh, from with 2009 with Clemson and 2017 against Northwestern and 2022 against uh, Iowa. But like I said, UK, they did pretty well in basketball. Hopefully UK football can have a better year next year. But I think that's all I have for today's podcast. Um, comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, where you were watching this game, were you watching the games at your house, um, having two different screens on at the same time, because I know both games, they were on at noon Eastern time, which was terrible. Like I said, I was trying to keep up with UK, Louisville, uh, while I was at the game working, the bowl game. So um, I'm glad I was able to keep up, and I'm glad UK basketball won, but I wish it was a different result for Iowa, but... Like I said, comment down below where you were watching the game. Did you go to the bowl game? Did you go to the Louisville game? Were you watching it at home? Both games at the same time. Just comment that down below, and I hope everyone has a great 2023, and I'll see you all back very, very soon. Thank you all for watching.